Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin. I'm your co-host, Aaron. And to pretty much kick off our new series... Within the Barrens. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> this is our new series, Within the Barrens, and um, we have very special guests on uh, pretty much the whole writing crew and producers of Death Drop Gorgeous. How have you guys been? Good. Good. Yeah, that's awesome. The only, one, the only, the only important one we're missing right now is uh, Mike, who uh, was one of the co-writers and co-creators. But um, yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the pup in the movie, so I'm standing in for him. <laughs> it, that 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 totally works. Um, I know that you guys are um, still. Are you still making the new movie, um, Saint Drago, or is that one pretty much all complete at this point? We have like three. Um, fairly complicated scenes left but we're hope we're banging out two of them within the next couple months and then the other one's probably not going to get finished until later on but the movie's getting edited as we go along so oh. once we get that final thing filmed probably in the fall we're just going to pop it in and, and it'll be ready to go hopefully by like no, november december that's awesome because that's one thing i wanted to um ask all of you is if, if you were um intending on reaching out to festivals and, and stuff again like you know at salem horror fest and all that because i would love to see see this on the big screen over there in, in Salem again. Well, especially because, like, the theme this year is um, folk horror, and yeah. this, this is the folk horror, so we kind of have to get it done for this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw you guys um, sure. talking about that. But I guess um, just one by one, we can start off with uh, with Chris. Um, do you feel like you, uh, you, you and all your buddies uh, pretty much uh, made a masterpiece over here? Because Aaron and I, <laughs> I really think that you guys did, honestly. We can kind of go one by one to get everybody's thoughts on uh, Death Drop Gorgeous. So my name is Christopher Dalby. I play Broadway Brian in the film, and I also am one of the co-creators. Um, to answer your question succinctly, yes, we did. Yes, I, I think <laughs> no, we did too. I, I know, we're, we're supposed to be like a little bit more humble, but um, by masterpiece, is it like an amalgamation of like five insane people's brains and then an entire community's um, effort? Yeah. Uh, yes, like uh, it, I've never heard of a movie made the way our movie was made. And I think it, it's just exciting to tell the story and share the story. All right, and we can move on to Brandon. What are, what are your thoughts on the whole, the overall process of this movie? How do you think it came out? I'm pretty psyched on how it came out. I just think that um, I, 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 we just want to send the message out there that anyone can make a movie and to just, just do it. Like, I mean, everyone's just so stuck on like what Hollywood and streaming feature, you know, their, their, their own movies look like. And, you know, we got to start breaking away from that and understand that not everyone can have that budget and to start kind of like searching underground for, for more. There's a lot of really great, great stuff out there. There's probably stuff that's been made like over the last two decades we've never seen before or heard of that's probably pretty awesome and fun, but yeah yeah and how about you ryan um yeah i mean i think in its own way like it's it is a masterpiece <laughs> but also like you know we always talk about things that we could have done differently things that we learned from you know obviously like with a limited budget there's things like that you wanted to do that you weren't able to do you're, you're but, a worse I, critic though so yeah <laughs> i think like at the kernel of it though like we like the, one of the primary reasons why I wanted to do it is we just wanted like a sort of passionate film that was like crazy, a crazy idea, like a local story, something that like we wanted to showcase. And we thought that like, you're not going to find this anywhere else. Like this is a story that like hasn't been told and couldn't be told unless you were actually us, you know, or like living like in this community. And I think that, you know, that's kind of like what a lot of modern horror movies are missing is that like, you know that that special like unique hook like that that you know special idea, like that, that passion that authenticity um and i think that like our movie definitely has that so even at times if it's like people think it's rough around the edges or this or that it's like it it just has like i think a really fun unique story that resonates with a lot of people you know and i, I always say that like i'm fine with getting bad reviews um every movie gets those and like ours has its you know fair share but the fact that like we also have a lot of people who are complete strangers that say I've watched this movie five times and now it's like on my favorites list it's like that's like good enough for me you know so that's I think awesome. the fact that like you can make a movie that for people want to watch multiple times like fine if that's only 20% of people so be it but you know yeah, I mean I'm definitely one of them um Aaron saw it during the fest, but he hasn't revisited it until um like we started reaching out to him. he watched it and he's like dude I totally forgot how freaking awesome this movie 
<laughs> but uh, moving on to uh, Wayne, I know that you were like the uh, pretty much main focused actor in this as well, and also being a producer. But what are your thoughts? Um, I I think that I think that we put out a pretty awesome uh, movie. I mean, it's I know it's not going to be for everyone. Um, and technically, it probably wasn't made for everyone. I mean, we wanted to like you know show queer horror and like that you know something cool, an original story. And not just some sequel reboot to something. Um, so I and, and like Ryan said, I'm I'm cool with the uh, the bad reviews. When it comes out of the bad reviews, like oh screw, I had a good time making it with my friends. And if you loved it, then great, we made it for you. Yeah, <laughs> and you can definitely feel all the love in this too, because I mean, yeah. you all acted in it. You all were you know directing, writing, producing, doing everything, getting the communities together. And that was another thing I wanted to uh, kind of touch upon was how was it getting all of like local uh, people to be part of this? Was it like having to pull you know people aside and you know, like have to be like, hey, here's a little bit of money. Can you can you come do this? Or was everybody like, yeah, dude, I'll be in your movie. Like, uh, no problem. <laughs> oh, we we I, paid I, you with thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza. Pizza too. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it really snowballed. Like in the originally, we just had like a script, and like uh, we had no idea if we were to even be able to film it. But like we still, we wanted, we did a lot of readers theater version of it. If you can oh, imagine okay. what readers theater of Death Drop just <laughs> looks like. Um, we we did and just to see what resonated with um the folks that we were hoping would be in the film and the amount of people who kind of took the script and ran with it and like identified with it and wanted to commit to themselves to it like we started seeing that happen with not only like um the musicians who participated but the venues who participated um like all of the bars all of the community like everyone the more they learned about the project seemed to lean in yeah. um and I don't think any of us could have imagined that in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I've been to pretty much all the locations you um, all yeah. shot there. You know, like, you were using the Dark Lady, Even which I... the Glory Hole? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've been there no. a few times. I thought that was you in our garage. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I've been at the Dark Lady because um, I, I go there with my fiance every now and then, and... Um, has friends who actually you know go on stage there and whatnot and they played in all the drag shows which is freaking awesome um i've, I've actually played at the as um 220 with a band uh like a few years back so it was really awesome to see that there and just like looking at all the streets too i'm like i know that street i know where that is that building before. <laughs> so that's another thing that's really cool with it with being so local to something and seeing a pro like um, a product of something that came out around you and it's getting this much height like you guys are on fucking shutter, you know. Like that's that's an accomplishment in its own. And um, was that like a, a big process to get through to get on shutter, or did they reach out to you like, hey, we love your shit, we're putting you on? It was it was way easier than we thought. I think uh, I think Mike or someone outreached. We had a connection, I think through K actually, and then um, sent an email, and then they they reached out to us, and then they they were very interested. So it it ha actually happened right before I was in really quickly and <laughs> yeah. kind of shocking. <laughs> There's this guy Sam who's who's awesome, who's like director of programming that uh, we were in contact with, sent him the screener, then set up a time to like um, to just do a Zoom call, and he's very like reachable and down to earth. Uh, and so after that, yeah, he was like, this is a lot of fun. I love it. And so we, we just went from there. Yeah. Awesome. Aaron, do you have anything? That, that was during the time when we were courting a lot of possible distributors. And like, we, we uh, feel like we went on like 30 dates with like distributors <laughs> that like, you know, dates that just didn't, you know, end yeah. the best, but like Shutter <laughs> came out at like, you know, like really us <laughs> yeah that's awesome like as soon as you guys dropped it was last september correct so it's been almost a full year that you guys have been on there and you yeah. have four out of five skulls and that's that's great <laughs> seeing something um you know to this magnitude yeah does it have a very low budget feel to it yes because it is low budget you know but uh, <laughs> i i love low budget films it's and yeah, yeah, it's it's super campy. It's a slasher, and it's got you know um, a lot of very um, you know good things going on with themes like you guys are touching on like the, the queer community, which you know a lot of films and a lot of people don't really touch on. And I love seeing that be more in the not really the mainstream, but I feel like you guys definitely paved the way 
for more LGBTQ plus communities to go out and make shit. And I think that's fucking awesome. Well, thank you. It's, it's awesome that you get the budget thing too. I love reading reviews, like especially in like prominent um, like print media that have reported about us. And like the movie is, it has a very cheap feel and looks cheap. It's like, is this a critique or like, are you stating the obvious or like <laughs> yeah. subjective data? Like it's just, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was 20,000 bucks. Like, and, it, and it's even worse than that. Cause like at least half of that was spent on pizza and cocktails for the dragon. <laughs> it's really like go. a $10,000 movie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys just answered my my question to you. I wanted to know how much the budget was. So that's that's for the amount of money that you guys used, and for you know all the effects, which I know you guys own the company too. The the monster makeup. Um, that was another thing I wanted to ask. Is like, how did the monster makeup come about? Was that for a product of Death Drop Gorgeous, or was that something that happened way before then? I I would say that um after death drop gorgeous was finally like out in the world and started growing um we had really um started brainstorming all of uh the future projects we wanted to work on and there was enough that we're like oh this is bigger than just our movie like we want to start kind of um compiling and like thinking about like long term what's the next project who do we want to work with and i think that's how that little monster baby was born awesome so the special effects were done. Um, so they weren't done by the Monster Makeup Production Company. Um, so the majority of our budget. Oh, was, sorry. That's okay. No, no, you, you <laughs> it's okay. okay. I'm so, confused. Um, fine. No, you answered the question, Chris. That was that's what they asked. But um, so the majority of budget went to like post production and special effects. Like that's where a lot of your money ends up going. Um, but we, we wanted to spend extra on the special effects. I feel like if you want to have a horror movie that retains rewatchability, I think a lot of the special effects kind of come into play there. Um, so um, Victoria Elizabeth Black from Dragula did um, a good chunk of the special effects. Another special effects artist from Western Mass, um, Scott Miller, uh, did some of them too. So um, it, that was kind of fun. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Wow. And we um, did a couple of them, I <laughs> Yeah, a couple. <laughs> How did you guys like come together? Have you been like friends for a long time and like just start off like with an interest in making movies? What inspired you to kind of get together and start making films. So I think that we've all known each other for, we've all known each other for longer than the existence of the movie or the inception of the movie. Um, Brandon and I are partners. We've been together for like 12 years, 10 to 11 years, 10 years, wow. something like that. Congrats, guys. That's Has awesome. it been that much time? Been, yeah, Wayne, I know like, Wayne and, for, and Chris yeah, for and Chris, a long time. Forever. I know Wayne for like 20 years. Yeah, but... So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like the movie, I mean, you can talk about it more than I can, but in terms of like how the idea for that began. And well, so Chris and I were just like, we're hanging out and just um, talking about how like a lot of those, those sex apps are kind of designed for serial killers. Like they're really <laughs> just, <laughs> um, gay men will skip a lot of red flags to go get laid. And, um, you know, we just kind of like just making dumb jokes about it. And then we brought it up to Mike, uh, Mike Ahern who's not here today. And he was like, well, why don't we make it into a movie? This is like a year later. So I brought it up to Chris and I was like, hey, our, my friend Mike wants to make our like weird idea into a movie. So we just started chatting and brought Wayne and Ryan on board and started adding like the um, more of like the social commentary to it, adding the drag aspect to it and just kind of like creating the, uh, the storyline. Yeah, because the first the, the first kind of draft was like this like down and dirty, just murder idea <laughs> of just like, how do we kill gay dudes in funny, weird ways? And then that <laughs> really we're like, how about some content, I guess? Um, but, uh, <laughs> it just kind of came together as you went along, basically. Oh, yeah. What, what I was laughing about earlier when you're like, is it a masterpiece? And I was like... Well, the original cut of the film's like four and a half hours long. And I'm like, hey, I would pay to see that. That was our masterpiece. <laughs> we might have like a cut of it still. It's like, it's <laughs> the stuff we cut out isn't like mastered or like the sound's yeah. not balanced, but it yeah. can be like the, the Event Horizon. Um... Oh, yeah, Event Horizon. <laughs> missing, missing footage. <laughs> yeah. You guys will release it. Yeah. <laughs> You should just release it. Yeah, just do it as like a special edition thing. Hey guys, here's like a you know a four hour cut of our movie. <laughs> it's a lot of it's not good because it's not edited or anything. But here you go. Here's a little bit more. That'd be awesome. Um, Surprisingly, it is edited. It's just not like fine tuned at all. Like the, the audio is gonna drop out and sound like it was filmed in a toilet. But <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No, people really buy the low budget on that. 
<laughs> the original script, but the, original script. the people would get the people would get what they really wanted, which is more Broadway Brian and Wayne. Like we would, you know. Yeah, just... <laughs> I, I really do have to hand it to everybody, especially Wayne, because you were doing a lot of work at the end, you know, with the fighting, with doing it with, with the young Gloria <laughs> Hole and everything, and you know, smashing <laughs> bottles and shit. That that looked so fun. So how was the process of uh, you know Doing this final fight scene was it very taxing on you, or was it like, yeah, this is really fun? I, I you know, Saturday for Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a dream come true because originally, like, I wanted, I kept telling them, I was like, I want to be thrown through like a plate glass window, but on <laughs> budget and storyline, like, you know, just it wouldn't really work. But kind of the way we went with that whole like eighty dynasty cat fight ending with a lot of that synthetic glass and the rolling around and like, you know, almost like our WWE fantasies coming to life where I could slam through the table. Like that was just it, it it all was like a dream come true. And then even before we got to that scene, I was also the killer's body double. So there was a lot of yeah. work um in having to be under the mask and in the gloves and oops sorry cat. Um oh, we love our cats. <laughs> no, they're very lady cat. <laughs> That was awesome. Um, I was telling Aaron too, like, um, Michael McAdams is so funny. Yeah. I, I, I could not stop watching um, his uh, performance for, you know, Gloria Hole. Is he going to be part of any other projects with you guys, or is this kind of like a, a one-off thing? Because I would love to see him in more things. He's kind of like our John Waters divine, so he can't get, we, he can't get away from us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's in, um, he's in San Droco, um, but he's not in drag. So uh, that's he, fine. Yeah. He's he's still great to watch regardless. Just the way he animates his body, the way he talks, is, it's so fun to watch. And also yeah. when killing everybody is also really fun too. Yeah. <laughs> he, he does he still does drag here and there too. So you ever see uh, Payne St. James on a flyer, um the drag performances are, are just as good as the acting. It's just really, really just top notch. Yeah, very pro. Awesome. Yeah, we were really lucky to, to have him on board. Um, I think when you guys asked him to play Gloria Hull, uh, he read like the first 15, 20 pages of the script and then was just like, all right, I'm in, I'll do it. That's awesome. But it wasn't a hard sell for us, which was, which was nice. And he hates horror movies too. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and it like forced him to watch it. <laughs> that's actually a, a really weird common thing that um, Aaron and I have been kind of discovering with like other actors and stuff. That they, they act in horror, but every time you listen to an interview, like, yeah, I hate horror. I don't watch it at all. <laughs> but they act in it, so I'm just like, oh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> we hear the, the, the Jamie Lee Curtis interview that's on the, um, it's on like the, I think the, the, the Fog score, it's on one of the CDs that came out back in like, one of the late 90s. In the second CD, there's a interview with Jamie Lee Curtis, and she's kind of talking about, like, you know, horror's not really my thing, and I just want to expand my career. It's not going to do much for me, and then now it's like, kind of made her <laughs> yeah and she's doing all the halloweens again so yeah I mean, it, she's you know back to her roots and it, you know she doesn't want to say it but it you know it is her roots um so i guess we really need to talk about the penis grinder scene <laughs> and just so whose idea was it to do this and whose idea was to do it this early in the film because it's like what 15 20 minutes in it literally sets up <laughs> what you are in for for this whole film I, I think when brandon and i were first doing like those like drink for drinks like brainstorming of kills like i that was one of the first like ideas of like glory hole meat grinder and um we wanted to be known as the movie with the meat grinder scene and uh I, I I can't say why we put it in the beginning, but um, maybe Brandon, you could. Well, we, we kind of like all the scenarios where people get killed in are like hookup scenarios that are common on these apps. So it's like you have the massage thing, the glory hole thing, the let's go do drugs thing, um, and maybe in my car. I don't know. Um, so those things all are kind of situations that happen frequently. Um, so I think luck of the draw that one was just kind of the <laughs> the second kill in the movie. What after the coke. Yeah, I think in terms of like picking the different ones, it, I mean, like maybe there are kind of like some plot reasons, but I think also like we wanted to move it up early in the film just because like in terms of pacing for kills for like a slasher, it's like you need to like keep the audience hooked. And so it's like we deliver on the opening scene, which is always fun to like see an opening kill. And then you're like, all right, well, you need to get to the second kill within like 15 or 20 minutes. So like it just happened to be that one, you know? I agree on that a lot because I it think. Worked out well. 
it, it definitely does set up the uh, you know the viewer of being like you are in for a ride uh, even in the first scene you are already <laughs> being like really set up for being there for a ride and like these kills are going to be pretty vicious um uh oh crap there was something i just wanted to ask um yeah so pretty much all of you die besides wayne so whose death spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> whose death was funner to <laughs> funnest to shoot sorry <laughs> I mean, I, I laughed most at Chris's because it was so absurd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The, uh... in two different segments. That was like, fun. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely... Well, I mean, the yeah. first the first segment the first segment of me getting murdered was not fun because I was at like an ex boyfriend's house and like we had just broken up like a week oh. before and so I had to die on that I had to die on that floor yelling please love me again and uh... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so I actually always I think it's hilarious now but I think Brandon's was the, the most fun like Brandon like we were in a basement for like eight hours and he was like tied to a chair urinating in Gatorade bottles, just trying to get that shot. And I, I feel like we had a good time. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, yeah. hoping they didn't, they didn't cut my, stomach, my actual stomach open. Yeah. We had a piece of plexiglass in there that was going to stop the turkey carver. Um, but, like, it kept fucking with the costume and looking weird, so we had to take it out. So we had to kind of just, like, just hope nothing went wrong. <laughs> yeah. So she ended up not going through the, uh, the second part of the silicone, which was right above my stomach. So thank God that worked out. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. We don't want you going to the hospital for your actual intestines hanging out. <laughs> and then having to feed them to Wayne. <laughs> it was really funny, though, doing Chris's death with uh, whenever, like, Gloria kicks the heel in the eye. So, like, at that moment, Mike, our, uh, Mike, who's not here, was, like, standing behind the camera, and he had, like, a spoon, and he's like, we filled with fake blood. So, like, the shot where, like, the blood splatters onto Gloria's face, it's, like, Mike flicking the screen. <laughs> oh, that's and great. It's, like, the first, like, three times because he's not a professional spoon, spoon flicker. <laughs> so, finally, we got, like, the yeah. one shot. Um, but that was that was really funny. <laughs> we just wanted to keep, like, all the, you know, all the, all the death scenes, like, graphic. Because I think, like, we wanted – there's a lot of reasons why we made this movie. We wanted to make a movie that we haven't seen and wanted to see that wasn't being done. I mean, we, there's – there are some like classic slash movies that really did a great job of like keeping it gross and you know because on paper there's there's not much to a slasher film like usually the plots are are, are fairly paper thin and if you're going to keep rewatchability and make a classic like you got to go with the gore and special effects like there's so many shitty awful slash movies i'm in love with that like i'll keep rewatching because of the, the violence like i love blood rage i love all really bad oh like, blood movies. rage awesome. yes if, if it's Blood definitely Rage not cranberry sauce horror, like what would you have it'd be like a weird soap opera with like some off-screen kills so i'm just like baffled that like, there's there's modern slashers being made that think that they can survive on their script and like thin plot alone with like kind of like cheesy gore it's, it blows my mind that people invest time and effort into doing that and like i can't remember the last time i've been blown away by the script of a slasher movie that had like shitty kills i'm like oh i'm gonna watch this again yeah <laughs> are you guys aware that you kind of made a Jalo, oh yeah, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's one thing that um I don't think too many people were talking about, but I was I think I was talking to you, Aaron, about it. I was like I don't know if it was as intentional or not, but this is technically an American Jalo because we just uh, you know yeah. just did Malignant too, which is technically an American Jalo, and also knowing that you guys made one, and it, it both uh both this one came out I think officially like on streaming or everywhere last year so it's about the same time as malignant um so that's really cool to know that giallo is kind of making it into america now and that's definitely one of my favorite genres so i don't know if that was something intentional that you guys did on your end or if it just just happened yeah so we um we, it was intentional we wanted to have like the whole the whole reason why we have like the giallo like colors and stuff is we wanted to make the the nightlife like kind of like inside of like the drag queen's brain like nightlife is just like beautiful like vibrant colors it's just almost like las vegas f surreal beautiful atmosphere and then like the, the daytime when they're out of drag and doing like their 40 hour week jobs it's like very drab and gray like the scene with like chris and brian walking is just kind of like we wanted to make the daytime the doldrums of the, the day job and then the nighttime is just beautiful at like colorful place and like i think just kind of filming like a giallo kind of you know the, just the 
this oversaturation of colors like i don't know it's just kind of creates that fantasy world i love it <laughs> it's also yeah. providence is actually a really good place to kind of get that vibe too with the nightlife well maybe i don't know since the pandemic i haven't been too much over there but i remember there used to be a huge nightlife there a lot of clubs and stuff and you know like that neon light-esque you know like feel to it yeah 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 it's also, still happening re-emerging yeah this was but, uh, filmed during the pandemic too right I think, or just right before that. No, we uh, we it was we filmed it like maybe a year before the pandemic. Yeah, and then, like, that's what it was, I was released. Yeah, released during the pandemic. Yeah, that's what I meant to say was it was filmed like right before and was released during it because you guys were on the virtual um, Salem Horror Fest. That's what I remember. And um, that's also another thing that's really cool is that there's two technically two Salem Horror Fest films that made it onto Shutter. Film you guys did, and the strings. Yeah. And yeah. that's also a really really cool movie and uh they were both you no know, showing at the same year so congrats on everybody who's you know was, getting was over there um no i don't i think um and what about the other one that like the demon possession the kids film on the iphones um i wish the name of that movie i think that was civil horror it could be yeah that's there. oh my god i know Threshold. exactly what movie you're talking about too Threshold. but yeah those guys are awesome too they're really friendly the, the threshold creator yeah that's, that's like, a the threshold part distro company those guys are awesome i think they were might have been salem i can't remember yeah they were i, mean, I think they yeah. yeah they were on the same year as, as you guys I, i'm pretty sure so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing the new movie that you guys are making over in salem horror fest and um i guess we could probably touch on a little bit of the new film is there anything you guys want to leak or talk about now uh any themes or anything for this film that you want people to know about um themes i mean um yeah, I mean, there's definitely like social commentary in this one. It, it's it's pretty fucking gay. Um, Nothing wrong commentary. with that at all. Let's do it. <laughs> it's a little. Um, I think it's like it's. I think it's a little bit more scathing in this one, but it's it's more subtle but more scathing. Um, so I'm curious how it's going to be received. <laughs> it's a it's a harsher story for sure. Like I think uh, Death Drop gives you a lot of breaks in humor. I mm -hmm. think uh, Saint Drogo uh, viewers will go in with a lot. Um, a harsher critique of the world we live in. <laughs> I mean, even just by seeing the trailer, I'm like super excited to see oh. what you guys have going on. Are you guys going to be dropping any other trailers for this or are you going to wait until it's uh festival ready? So we, we want to, the, the problem is we're still kind of like working on special effects. I feel like to get a good trailer out there, you need a little bit of the special effects happening. Yeah. Um, so we might film like a couple like really like little teaser things, but we'll probably wait until more of the special effects are, are completed. That's yeah, eventually awesome. we'll have a, another trailer, but yeah, I agree. Like once we have everything filmed and we can pick and choose what exactly we want, yeah. It's gonna be gross. The the um we're we're doing the same same approach to special effects, like um camera's not turning away, it's gonna be disgusting. <laughs> I can't I can't wait. I can't wait. Um another really big thing that I think a lot of people were kind of surprised is Linnea Quigley is in this film. So uh <laughs> Whose idea was it to reach out to her, or did she reach out to you guys to uh, get her on for a little cameo? So, um, uh, so our movie was scored by a bunch of different people, but Devin Hunt and um, Kyle uh, teamed up. Kyle Paradis teamed up to do some of the scoring, and um, Devin is, is really good friends with Linnea. Uh, he was in a band called Sex Commit from Boston, and she was in one of their music videos. And um, they just have been really tight for a long time. And uh, she was up at Salem Horror Fest um, a few years ago um well while we were filming and Devin was like do you want to go meet Linda quickly we we're like oh my god fuck yes so, like we went and met her um became friends with her uh and then um we just kind of stayed in touch and then she's like I'll come back up the next year and so we were like oh we should see if she wants to like get get her in the same uh, get her into a death drop somehow I was like what if we I was, we were racking our brains like yeah. how are we gonna fit her in I was like wait a minute I was like when Wayne gets into like an uber it was gonna be like somebody else and I was like what if that's Linnea and we're just like, yeah, let's do it. So we were in the hotel parking lot. We were hanging out in our hotel room and we were like, Linnea, I have a question for you. And she was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Let me put on some lipstick. And then we just like walked out of the parking lot. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. And who's she listening to in the car again? Because it's very specific. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. And I guess we can kind of do a, a round table here. Um, Chris, what's your favorite scene in this, in this film? Uh, drop. Uh, death drop. Ooh. Um, there's so many that I absolutely <laughs> adore. Um, but I'm gonna go sappy on this one. Um, okay. 
uh, early on in the um, filming, uh, Gloria came with all of her ball gowns to the bar and was going to perform uh, the original song that was scored for us by Jackie Camel. It's the Please Love Me Again song. And I, I just remember seeing uh, Gloria up on like the empty stage doing that song. And I think there was a moment where we were like, we might need to make a better movie than we planned to make. <laughs> like, and I like we, like, we have to do uh, Peyton St. James justice for what she is delivering us. And uh, I think that's so one of my favorite moments. Awesome. Uh, Brandon? Oh man, I have a lot of favorites, but um, I think at the end of the day, like watching the film, I think the um, the bathtub scene is one of my favorites. But I really love the scene when um, when Young Gloria gets up on stage and does that Human V song, which like when Wayne gets enchanted. Like that whole sequence is just like it's just so fun. <laughs> I don't know, I love it. Yeah, I, I think that was filmed really good. Um, all of, I think every shot in this movie is filmed very very well. Uh, for like the you know the limited access that you guys had to pretty much everything, um, but how about you, Ryan? <laughs> um, I love that scene as well, especially because the bachelorette party like they're so much fun, like they're friends of ours. Shit, and yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I think like maybe the scene where Chris goes to Gloria's house. Um, <laughs> so when Broadway Brian goes to Gloria's house and he's going for like. T theater tips on like an acting role for like toll booth attendant number two um it's like when he goes there and he and she's like obviously like not into it at all and he puts on her drag while she's in the bathroom like smoking a cigarette and like that whole like interaction like when he comes down and he starts singing her song and he's like twirling around and like the look on her face when he says like you could be my drag mother and she's just like <laughs> Like absolutely, oh, not. No. I like crack up every time I watch that. <laughs> How about you, Wayne? Um, <clears throat> they it's gonna really be the fight scene. It's gonna be the fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> enough, it's actually one of the scenes that kind of just breaks my heart. Is the um, the uh, her failed performance when she gets up and she performs the song "Gravy Daddy," mm -hmm. and um, when. She when like she gets knocked off that stage and then goes into the dressing room, I, it's just from it's just that whole sequence for me, from the people laughing to her actual face when she's in that mirror. It's just like I think it's a big heartbreak, and that's one of my favorite scenes. Like that's I think that's kind of where I noticed that Peyton St. James was just like not only was she incredible throughout all of filming, but I was just like wow, like I like I wanted to go up and hug her. Yeah. And why did you tell her she was a bitter old queen, Wayne? <laughs> that was improv too. <laughs> Big compliments from Shot Boys. <laughs> what about you, Aaron? Do you have a favorite scene? There's a few of them. Um, but honestly, like, uh, my favorite kill scene would probably be the high heel and the eyeball. Um, yeah, I love that. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Do you realize how hard it is to cut a high heel? Uh, we had we went through <laughs> almost every single tool that you can imagine before I actually had to bring it to an industrial shop and have it basically plasma cut it off. <laughs> oh like, my god! Um, I and it was just like shitty TJ Maxx heels, like but <laughs> they are built to like hold heavy loads. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> like that is. After nuclear apocalypse, it'll just be all like high heels and cockroaches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like cockroaches in high heels. In there. Uh, let's see. I have a favorite funny scene. Um, it's when Tragedy is um, up there alone and she's using the, the little machine and she's making all the noises. <laughs> I die laughing every time. I'm just like, this is this is the, the best scene ever because it's just so funny and she's like all into it and everybody's just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, that one's really good. Um, you guys dress drag outside of we or at all? Um I would, I would, <laughs> do you say do we dress in drag or what was the question no. yeah do you dress in drag like oh. outside of filming or every now and then if it's like <laughs> i don't know if i'd call it drag you've done it like it's usually just twice. us wasted wearing 
fur coats and wigs and like causing me <laughs> having a good time. I think that's the closest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a themed Christmas party or something. Like that's we've awesome. done that, you know, with you know when Wayne did King of Queens, it's like this fundraiser where they take like um you know like bar, bar staff and bartenders and put them in drag for a fundraiser that Wayne performed one of those and that was that's awesome. Remember the, the drunkest I've ever seen Wayne. <laughs> wasn't it wasn't your name Ashy Simpson? It was <laughs> that's absolutely awesome. <laughs> And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you guys actually reached out to, you know, actual um, uh, yeah. drag queens and stuff to be honest, like Janet Fitness, isn't she like an actual like Hello, drag queen? queen? Yeah, they all are. Right? So they're, they're all actual drag queens. We lucked out with Janet because uh, Janet and Mike are really close friends. Um, so Janet actually like quit drag at that point, but like oh, really? we were actually casting other people to do it. She, she said no at first, but then we were like, you have to do this role. Like you, you really can't say no. And then she did it and just told it. She was so good. Yeah, she, and she's like, she's like the sweetest person in the in real life. She's just so sweet. Um, I was gonna ask. I was like, she, you know, really makes you want to hate her. But I would imagine that's not how she is in real life. <laughs> yeah, no, she's really sweet. <laughs> yeah, all the names are great too. That's like one another thing I really like about like you know drag shows and stuff is seeing how creative people can come up with the names and then oh, seeing yeah. how crazy they can get with their costumes. Like watch you know Dragula all the time with how crazy you know they can get with it and and it kind of you know definitely shows in the movie that you guys have with just how you know all out everybody goes and it really makes this film and makes it so much more entertaining. And watching all of the the drag shows, you know, kind of go on and then doing the music that you guys had made for you, which I love all the songs. Is there a, uh, any place for us to download those songs? Like, do you guys have them out anywhere, like on a vinyl or anything? If not, <laughs> we, we really, really want. To. So a lot of the actual like bands that are playing the band songs in the movie are you can get on like they're they're on their albums and on like Spotify and Bandcamps. The actual scoring was done um, by Devin and Kyle and then by Kevin, um, our, he's our cameraman for St. Drogo too. And Kevin actually has a, a music project called Limousine. It's, it's spelled a little crazy, but it's like really awesome, like like a dark wavy, like synth stuff. And he, he's just like, he's like a prodigy at like everything he does, but he's just an incredible musician. He has stuff on, um, on Bandcamp. Um, I think it's L-I-M-M-A-Z-E-N-E. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, I, I, there's so many people in the way the music, but a lot of stuff like Human Beast, Drop Dead, Jackie Camel, um, Boy Harsher in the beginning. Boy Harsher in the beginning. Uh, a lot of the songs just like picked off albums. Awesome. Um, oh, Rod, uh, Bright Light, Bright Light. Uh, he, yeah, he wrote Bright, but those were custom. custom. Yeah, yeah, he wrote them. Yeah, awesome. he did he like a miracle for us like that song that she's lip syncing because like, a lot of the drag queens when they did the performances were singing copyrighted music so i think like janet was singing like a rihanna mix and there's other stuff in there too and we couldn't use it so like rod like went in and like watched the lip sync and then created a song over the lip sync and it was <laughs> oh that's <laughs> the song's awesome about, the song's called two left titties which is just yeah. brilliant <laughs> it's, it's so good it's so good <laughs> I, I'm obsessed with like getting um vinyls of scores of movies, so that's yeah. why I wanted to ask to see if you guys had anything out. Because uh, I even if it's like on Spotify, I listen to scores way more than I listen to like anything else other than like podcasts. I don't know. Yeah. There's just something about movie music compared to you know actual music. It just hits way different. Totally. Um, um, can I ask? Um. So. I was going to add really quick, like on that last thought um, and like them uh, writing songs specifically for the film that happened twice. And it's like, that's why sometimes it's really frustrating when we get this like critique from people that like the drag queen's lips, like don't even match the words. Like this is so like amateur. And I'm like, if you only knew the process that we went through, because like we did the performance before the music and then had to write like, like that's a the fact that they're able to do that at all is like yeah. pretty amazing so it's like the fact that like two words like don't match up properly it's like just cut us some slack jackie campbell <laughs> did a song over um when uh rosebud sancy sings that is a crazy one and jackie campbell did the same thing uh max uh max holbrook did um the, the bathtub scene at that score yeah and like uh the drag queen is singing like an fk twig song kelly square um and we didn't really try to match those lyrics up but we tried to do our best to do it but like uh yeah that that's it's it took, it's a lot of work you guys did absolutely great um because i think it works perfectly you can't even tell that it's not the actual song that they're trying to sing so that, that's really like actually in a you know attention to the lyrics yeah you know? so that, that's really good um 
Is there anything uh, that you guys want to, you know, tell people about this movie? Like what, what people should be taking away from it? Obviously, don't take it too seriously because you guys even always say that you guys don't really try to take things too seriously. And I think um, you know, this whole movie really you know, defines that, especially with um, Gloria Hole when she's out like smoking a cigarette. And she's got the, the lady and the baby oh. and she <laughs> flicks the cigarette into the camera. I was fucking dying. Oh, my God. That's another really funny moment. I mean, I have a four year old son, so like I'm just like, don't do it. But, um, <laughs> but when she does it, it was absolutely great. I guess the last thing I would um, offer is like one of my favorite things about our movie is that it is like its own little universe. And like what we wanted was to be like a lot of like queer stories like centered are your queer heroes but we really had a great time being villains and like creating monsters and using monsters as a way to make commentary on our own community so i think it's fun to have a full queer cast and a story that is only about queer people and uh i think more people should do it i agree you guys did great on i, I want to see more i really do I want a death drop gorgeous too. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a whole right. franchise. One of these days. The only thing to say about it too is again, like we guys said, it's just have fun with it. Like I think like even like John Waters really films too as campy and crazy as they are, there's some underlying social commentary there too. And like we obviously have things we want to say. Like we don't want to be like too like hardcore in your face, but like we also want to like people should have fun. I think like drag needs to continue being punk and subversive. And if you're yeah. not going to push buttons and what, I don't know what the fuck you're doing at this point. Like, um, so I think, you know, I, I want to keep that energy going too. I want, I want people to have to think, I want people to feel uncomfortable with certain things. I want people to kind of have to use some critical thinking and be like, why did they do this? And, you know, um, and just kind of at the same time though, like watch this with your friends. This isn't some like, like, fucking gone with the wind like just have some <laughs> fun talk shit make fun of characters that's the whole point like we want rewatchability we want this to be like a drive-in classic called classic like um i think that people need to be okay with that and be okay to let go and have some fun and not take everything so fucking serious all the time i agree with that especially with the climate that you know especially our country is in right now is is awful and yeah. it's, that's also one reason why I really like that this movie is out there um, for, you know, queer and LGBTQ plus communities because people are so afraid to speak up now because of just everything that's fucking going on. And yeah. I'm so happy that you guys were able to do this um, and you're still continuing to do more things like this, especially for the queer community, um, even like local and now like worldwide because it's on Shutter, and I, I really cannot wait for the new movie. So I, I have to thank you guys for really like you know giving a voice to the people who are very afraid to speak up, even though this is a movie about killing people <laughs> and trying to stay young. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we always say death trap brings families together. <laughs> there you go. What our movie was about. <laughs> we, always, we always put an open invitation out there too. Like if anyone has questions about like how we did certain things or how we like fundraised, how we got what we did or like, how we did certain scenes, like any of those questions, like feel free to email us, message us on any of those. Like, we all have all the social medias, so we're, it's not hard to find us. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really upset because I ordered the uh, the VHS uh, tape that, that was made with uh, the Witter Entertainment, and it was supposed to come here today, and it didn't fucking make it. Man. <laughs> so I'm so upset by that, but when I run into you guys, because I do want to, after this, I want to figure out where, you know, if you guys are doing anything local, unless you want to say it now for anybody who is local, that if you guys do any like hangouts for I'm um, Death Drop Gorgeous or anything like that, that you want to put out there for people to come and do like a meet and greet, guys, because you're all amazing. Well, thank, you. thank you. We do have the the um. I mean, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Tuesday this, with Gloria Hall. <laughs> we have um uh, for for uh, Pride Month of the Providence Library. They're doing this huge like LGBTQ archive in the library, and they they invite us to show the film. Um, so th that's on June fourteenth. It's a Tuesday. It's going to be like um meet and greet. Like they're doing like food and drinks, and showing the movie. They have this awesome sound system and movie theater on the on the third or fourth floor. Um, there's that coming up. We're doing a we're showing in Worcester on oh god June twenty fifth. Um, I, I'm not sure the name of the theater, but that's going to be a big meet and greet Q and A party too. Um, but I, I do have a couple other places I've approached us in, within Providence that will like show the movie again too. We just showed it back in January, so we'll probably space it out. Like maybe we might do like an August September kind of showing somewhere. But um, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted though. Yeah, because yeah. I, I really do want to you know uh, partake in some of the stuff and hang out with you guys and meet you 
properly, yeah. you know. And Tuesdays work awesome. perfect for me because I don't work on Tuesdays, so that's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. And so, I don't hey, either. That's perfect. <laughs> I will I'll definitely be there. And um, you were correct. It is the 25th. All right. Yeah. I'm going to have to write down those dates after. So I'll definitely so, mark yeah. my calendars. Yeah, else... June for... yeah, June 14th, death drop at the library. And then uh, June 25th, it's awesome. death drop in Worcester. Yeah. Um, Worcester. Worcester. <laughs> is there any um, places for anybody to help fund the um, St. Drago right now? Or do you guys feel set for um, you know all the money that you needed for this film? Or is there something out there like an Indiegogo? I know you guys did have one, but I haven't checked on it in a, in a long time to see if it was still active. If you go to Indiegogo... It's still alive. It is? Alive, okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah you, you unfortunately always need money. As soon as you think you got everything, you're like, oh, I think it's done. It's like, oh, here's this insurance bullshit here's like some more post-production costs like it's just like yeah post-production so that comes with these movies it's such a fucking pain in the ass like that's the thing that's tough about making indie film it's like you just want to get shit out there it, publicists are a million dollars there's always hidden fees like legal shit that pop up it's just a, such a fucking headache so I'm hoping as the years go on like that you know more things pop up for filmmakers like maybe like like band camp versions for move, like a thing like that for film or you know stuff to make it more accessible so be like people like us can skip all this stupid bullshit that just pays off like rich people so yeah yeah i don't like to make it easy <laughs> no no yeah. Yeah, step on the little guy artist. yeah and that, in our, you know we, we we reached our original goal with uh with the campaign raising for saint drogo but that goal was sort of the bare bones, like what do we need to like proceed and actually to like get the movie produced. But like, as Brandon said, there's so many other costs that come up and also like things that we didn't think about in terms of like, there's scenes sometimes that we'll have to redo and then it's, that's a trip out to P-Town. So like all of a sudden now that's an extra like $500 that yeah. we have to spend that we didn't anticipate. So yeah, it's like it, any little bit helps um, and all of it in the end will get spent. Uh, so yeah. And um, if I'm not mistaken, isn't uh, Kay being a producer on this as well? I think yeah. I saw that she was out with you guys awesome. um, a couple months yeah. ago. So seeing that is also really cool too, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm just psyched that she's – everything that – what she's doing right now I just think is so crucial. Um, she's just such a force, um, super kind, and just like – just creating something totally new. I think it's uh, – I think what she's doing is it's going to really pave the way for a lot of awesome stuff. Yeah, I agree. She's so down to earth and I love all of her views and like she is the type of person that doesn't hold back. And I feel like yeah. all you guys are exactly <laughs> like that too, um especially through this film that like you guys don't like like to hold back but you do a little bit like you were saying and I, this is why I can't wait for the new one to see how crazy things can get. But mm -hmm. I love people that, you know, speak their mind and they don't want to censor themselves and I think that's very important in this day and age is not to be censored because everybody anything that you say is is going to be used against you you know and um yeah. once again i have to really thank you guys for you know doing a movie like this that really is different than everything else out there yeah it's campy it's bloody it's queer but it's it's definitely way above anything else on the market right now thank, thank you. you that means a lot <laughs> yeah i mean thank you guys for for making it you know and Wayne, I mean, you you were holding, I mean, not to say that you guys weren't doing a great job, but Wayne really did, like, hold this, the whole thing together. I think your acting was absolutely great. Everybody, it was acting great, but just from everything that was going on with you in the film, you know, you had to, like, leave, and you came back to this this place you didn't want to be in, in the shithole, and then you were getting even more uh, um, upset because uh, just you weren't getting, I guess, like, paid enough, and then you were going to clubs, and then what happened to you is that you were being cheated on again, which is like, sucks, and then you get into that fight. Um, so you got into, actually, a lot of fights in this film. So, I mean, <laughs> there you go, man. Um, She's and... a survivor. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm really, Especially really more of a biography. <laughs> I'm really excited to see. <laughs> really excited to see, you know, what is in store for the, the next film. And if you guys are planning on doing another one after this, because I, I don't want you guys to stop. I, I really don't. <laughs> we have a we have a third one that's like our baby. This the second one was kind of like Saint Drogo was like our like our little baby COVID project. It was, it became more complicated than we attended. We were hoping to just bang it out small as the smallest crew possible during the pandemic and get it mm -hmm. done. 
Um, ended up getting a little, a little bit more complicated than we thought, but um, we just want to have more gambling chips on the table when we approach like um, producers or uh, any like financiers for the third one we want to do. And the third one's really cool. Um, that one's called Queen of the Rats. Um, that, we don't have a whole lot of info out there about that one yet, but like that's like really like what our go-to that we're trying to get, um, awesome. get done. Yeah. I like that name too, Queen of the Rats. Say, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it just sounds awesome. It, it's dirty, but it's awesome. You know. But we could say it's like it's about um, the early thousands Providence uh, warehouse and noise rock scene, the mafia, and a Lovecraftian monster. <laughs> oh my god! You said Lovecraft, and I'm in. <laughs> I'm fucking in. That's it's great. another phenomenal script. I, I'd say. And I I really yeah. hope that you know. I don't know if it's your goal or what it to actually be picked up by, you know, like an actual distributor. Um, but I really hope that that does happen at some point. And it would be even more kick ass if you guys got picked up by the Gar Foundation, you know, with um yeah. George A. Romero's foundation. Cause I think you guys fit right in yeah. there. Um, especially oh, now that they're part of Salem Horror Fest and you guys are yeah. gonna be showing your next film, you know. I i I'm rooting for you guys, you know, get underneath someone's belt. I really hope so. I mean I, th I think Queen of the Rats is like I'm gonna fucking rule. It's just like it's so fun. It's uh, because Saint Drogo is not funny and um, and Death Drop is, but I think like this third one's a combination of the two. It's camp. It's gory. It's gross. There's a monster. It's funny. It's just all over the place. Um, there's really nothing like it. So we're really hoping that we can get enough you know, resources them together and eventually make this third one. That's awesome. Um, and also with everybody being such close friends and everybody being part of the writing process, I imagine it just it feels so much better than having to do it yourself because i've numerous times i've wanted to like sit down and write something uh you know because i've been trying to plan this thing for the podcast i wanted like a live event to kind of happen going on I, and it's just being able to sit down and have a, uh, your mind just there to do it is so hard but i feel like with technically you know four of you now um when are you part of the writing process now that you were kind of just doing the um uh being a producer correct Yes. Um, I think not with St. Drogo, but a little, uh, I have a little more input with um, Queen of the Rat. So that was kind of, uh, we sat down and, and kind of worked through that a little That's bit. That's awesome. More. Really cool. So everybody is just one big family. Um, is there yeah. going to be any other familiar faces from uh, Death Drop being into St. Drago, or is that something you guys want to keep hidden? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you, there, there are familiar faces. Um, you're gonna recognize a lot of people. Yeah, I don't think we have to keep like some. No, that's hidden. true. I mean, like, so Jan Janet Fitness uh, is uh, has a primary role, um, also not in drag. So there's no drag queens. Oh wow! In you're gonna have to guess if you've seen somebody before. You're like, is this them out of drag? Oh, this is yeah. a fun game. You guys should make this into a game. It comes with a little like <laughs> who's who, you know, like a, like a, a guess who type thing, and you guys get a little card when you go see the the movie and stuff, and they have to kind of guess on that. That would be freaking awesome. It's got uh, Nitty Nothings in it again. Um, Complete Destructions in it. Um, uh, Kelly Square and um, uh, Ava Unit One, for, formerly Naoki, are both in it. So yeah, uh, Mike. I think Mike Puppy's gonna be in it too. So there'll be yep. a lot of familiar people. <laughs> I believe Mike Ahern, Brandon Perez are acting in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's great. This uh, I, I have whole a, I family. Have a cameo. <laughs> you have a cameo, yeah. I love, I love the picture of what is Brian doing right now? <laughs> He's like pouring a drink. I love <laughs> no. it so much. Shit. Okay, right. that. that was my cameo. Yeah. They wouldn't let me be in, them. They wouldn't let me be in this one because I'm too funny. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm, I'm glad yeah, you guys Chris, are. You're not a serious actor. <laughs> it's another really good thing is seeing that you guys do have a range. It's not just all you know, funny and and bloody and gory. That you guys can go in a more serious tone I, I feel like with some uh directors i think it's probably because there's so many of you that are you know in the writing process that they kind of have a hard time switching off um from going from something either serious to you know a little bit more lighthearted or lighthearted to serious so it's good that you guys are mixing in these new things and like you just said the third one's going to be kind of back to not really the basics but more like death drop so that's that's also a really plus on your side I think part of that is just like we all have like different likes for horror like like chris is likes the campy or funnier stuff like i i'm i'm more of a fan of like dark gross and slow um i feel like when you're kind of in the middle you kind of i'm a good mix um like i like a good slasher but i love i love a giallo like you know i, I me like too dude giallo is 
top tier, man. In my in my books, anyway. Yeah. They're right, you're right. You're kind of like the folky folk horror dark stuff too. Yeah, I mean, I love folk horror. Uh, I love things with like yeah, satanic elements. I love, yeah. I love slashers. I mean, I like it all. I, I appreciate slow burns too if they're like if they really pay off in the end. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, so I think like a combination of like all of our brains combined. I think I think Queen of the Rats will be more of like a healthier combination of all of our minds. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it'll be fun. I'm excited for Queen of the Rats already, and it's not even in production. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Um, are you guys gonna stay, um, continue to stay local for all your films, or do you want to branch out and you know go to other communities and whatnot? Is it all pretty much gonna be in like the Massachusetts and Rhode Island um, area? Um, as much as like we'd all love to like move somewhere tropical, I, we're probably stuck here. <laughs> I mean, I think. I think like Queen of the Rats is a specifically provident story. So that will definitely be here. Um, and actually like St. Drogo was a specifically Provincetown story. So it was filmed primarily there. Um, but I think in the future, like we would be open to doing projects elsewhere if money and time allowed, because I think it's like, you know, everybody has like other stuff they're doing, like other lives, jobs, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that like, if we got the backing and the funding to be like, here's a big chunk yeah. of money, go make this movie over like the next six months. And like, that's all you have to do. Then like, I'll go fucking anywhere, you know, like, <laughs> let's go, let's go wherever the, you know, we want to. So I right, will start throwing money at you and um, you guys can go <laughs> live your dream of just doing film every six months. That'd be great seeing you it. guys on festival circuits all the time. Um, I love it. <laughs> is there like, out of all the festivals that are out there, is there one that, if you haven't been a part of it already, that you really, really want to get on? Maybe Fantasia and Fantastic. Those two fests are just incredible. Yeah, I agree. This will, this... I think South by Southwest just because we got rejected. I want to get on that. Just to spite them. <laughs> Why the hell did you get rejected? That's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, because like, it's all, that's all just like corporate cum dump no offense. Yeah. It's like... It's, like they had like I think Ma was like a South by Southwest movie well, that was already like in the theaters. It's like that's like a, it has a million dollar budget. Like Don't Breathe was their opening. Oh, Don't Breathe that was like their was. opening show like the year that came out. So I think it's like it's much more commercial now than what it used to like, be. Yeah, that's, so. that makes sense. We played there like around the time it was like verging on getting commercial, and like when we got there, we got handed a backpack from like Jansport full of Red Bull and like all these like all these like corporate sponsors and like back in the day like you know south by southwest is broken up by like the record label showcases and you would have like you know the movie showcases it's all like indie like upcoming stuff like this is where like all the like labels would come down and grab new bands and grab new movies and then when we played there it was like all these bands are already fucking huge already signed to big labels so i was like this is really odd like why are these bands playing here i mean they're nothing not not bad bands but it was just like it was just becoming more of like a, a money maker like just kind of like uh, Red Bull, Red Bull had their, their logo on everything there, so you couldn't like turn like a, like an inch without saying Red Bull on something. Like, <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> right, let me let me rephrase. And I want to break into South by Southwest and plug in Death Drop yes. as like a yes. surprise, so that it just starts airing everywhere. All right, I'll, I'll dress uh, in black and I'll help you guys out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll go out there. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a movie about that, like like a take, like a festival takeover. It'd be kind of fun documentary. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. It'd be like Cecil B. Demented. It would be yeah. like us doing a new Cecil. That'd be great. <laughs> I'll also add with like film festivals in general that it's just like very typical to not get into most of the ones that you apply to. So it's this like long, tedious process where we apply to like 60 film festivals, which you often have to pay for submission to each one of them. Occasionally they'll invite you and you don't have to pay. But um, then at the end of the day, you might get into like somewhere between like 20 to 30% of them. Uh, so you really have to cast a wide net and then, you know, hopefully you'll get into some of the ones that you want to be in. So um, especially when, yeah, when it comes to the bigger, like more competitive fests, even if you have like a good film, you're by no means like guaranteed a spot in there, so. Yeah, it's kind of sad what's what's happening with um, with film festivals. I think one of the biggest problems was with COVID when everything went digital. Um, it kind of took like the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the uh, the the geographic element out of it. Like yeah, you know, like there's no more like now you can a movie that was made in Texas could be seen all over the world and 
or you know these little indie films it kind of just loses the magic like now you don't have to go to these like festivals anymore you can just watch them on your laptop and I kind of hate seeing that like I'm, I'm glad it's gonna be more accessibility and more eyes on your film but at the same time I just hate seeing that stuff kind of go away I think some film festivals are still doing pretty well but I think it's gonna definitely put a dent in a lot of it and it's being monopolized already there's already like fucking corporations like I think like Netflix and a few other ones are trying to weasel their way into like the festivals which is terrifying and Amazon too so that's going to be a nightmare I mean films are meant to be you know seen in a theater with groups of people yeah. and, and talk yeah. about what you just saw and like you know yeah. feel there be there with, with the the energy so yeah, um, yeah. that's why right. yeah. it's going to be great seeing um, you know your film with Salem Horror Fest next year uh, in person with a bunch of people and you know I know obviously Kay's gonna get you guys on there. I mean she can't she she has to. She's a fucking producer. You know? So she says, No, you guys aren't getting in. Sorry, no, no, no. We got we'll we right Yeah, then you know we did a real bad job. <laughs> like I signed off. I'm gone, guys. You gotta get a different producer now. Yeah, that's great. And I definitely wanna meet you guys. I'm gonna be there for the yeah. showings that you guys are gonna be doing. Uh do you do any like uh special posters or anything for these events or is it kind of just like Come and just say hi. Like, is there anything to entice people to come see these uh, viewing? So Wayne's been like our, our merch master. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I'm always working on something. You never know. <laughs> That's awesome. Because I, I'd love to get some posters up over here of, uh, you know, Death Drop. You artists. have posters, yeah. yeah I'd posters. love that. Yeah. And, and then some other ideas I have kind of in the shoot for anything that, like, if we are going to do something in person, uh, we have the two events coming up. I'm looking into some stuff. All right, that's awesome. Hashtag yeah. I swallow shirts. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, we do like signed signed DVDs, signed posters too. Like there's stickers, magnets, like different things like that. Uh, I'll take five of each. <laughs> yeah. Yay! <laughs> we try to go to all the um the PVD horror events too. Those guys are great. They do um once a month they do a, uh, a horror movie at Buttonwoods Brewery. Um, I think they're doing Madman uh, in yeah. June. So we'll probably be at that. So we try to like support them as much as we can too. Yeah, they're a podcast that I listen to. Even though they're so local, it's just, I haven't had a chance to go out to these events. And I, I want to reach out to the guys because I love their show. And, and I love yeah. the interview that you guys did with them too. Um, it's Since COVID, everything has just thrown everything off. Like I used to be out all the time. I used to go to the movies all the time. But now it's like it's so hard to even get out once. Um, it's also because work is just a, a freaking drag, but um, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> and um, our show is like starting to you know kind of take off now too. And I, I'm really happy that you guys you know came on and 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 you guys wanted to talk. Uh, and I'm I'm really happy to hear that you guys are finding success in you know local communities and you know doing all these showings and getting more people to be aware of you know what's going on globally and you know in the communities and just you know, speaking your mind once again you guys you know are really stealing the show in my eyes not just because i'm here in the community and being around it's, you guys really are doing something completely different and it's fucking awesome thank you thank you yeah, I mean, once again thank you um so i'll definitely be there for the uh the showings that are going on but if there's any last thoughts uh, anybody wants to throw out there, um, we can probably uh, end it here or whatever you guys want to do. No? <laughs> Honestly, thank you. Thank you both for being so, so uh, like, insightful for the movie. And, uh, like, it's really exciting to hear um, every time when people take pieces of it and reflect it back to us. It, it, it's so fun to see, like, something you made um, given back to you with so much love. So, uh yeah. Again, we I think we're all super stoked to continue having these conversations and sharing uh, the work. Yeah, and if you guys ever want to come on and talk horror too, it doesn't have to be about the movies that you're doing. The the door is always open. You guys are our family now. You know, you, you're on the show. You're you're part of the family, and uh, we will be seeing you um, very very soon, June. So this is fucking awesome. Is there any last thing that you want to ask or say, Aaron? Just happy to see you know like group of friends you know make something you know that they thought of and just enjoy themselves doing it you know and find success doing it as well so it's really happy to see that you guys can kind of share your thoughts to the world and like i said find success in it so i think well, you guys you. are you have killed it so far so 
Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a great time. I mean, like it's 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 sometimes well, it never feels like work. Sometimes it's super stressful. Sometimes it's like we're racking our brains about what like we have to do, but but like it's always we're always looking forward to it, and it's always a good time. And you know, it's it's just like a really fun experience to like share with your friends. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been like a a really positive thing I think for all of us. Can't wait to do more of it. <laughs> awesome. Oh no, actually, there was one thing I wanted to ask is um, have any of you gone to school for filmmaking or is everything just like homebrew? You guys thought of this uh, kind of out of the blue. It's like, hey, I want to do this, so let's go ahead and do it. I guess that was one thing I wanted to ask earlier, but I lost train of thought. <laughs> I went to school for digital recording. We didn't do, it wasn't all like film, but it was all, like like technical shit. It was nothing fun, like no theory. Um, so I, I knew like about like when setting up the shots, like rules, rule thirds and just kind of like just a little, some like certain like basic rules we kind of just uh had no idea what we we're doing <laughs> yeah yeah my background's digital art so like it was all kind of making art with technology but not in a very formal film way i'm more of an illustrator and designer by trade all right that's awesome yeah i did a lot of like editing for the film and for like the current film saint drogo but it's like school of youtube you know so <laughs> hey. basically just like learning out of necessity which nowadays is actually like easy i mean like yeah. it obviously takes time but like it's like you can learn things that you normally would have to go to school and get a degree for like 20 years ago and now it's like there's a billion tips and tricks and everything so it's just like take the time sit down and it's like so i you know learning like editing color grading all that stuff um but like the online resources are tremendous so anybody that's like feels intimidated about breaking into like filmmaking i'll just say like what go to youtube and like you can figure out how to do anything <laughs> da Vinci, we edited it on da Vinci resolve which is free you can it's like it's amazing it's a it's very it's, it's similar to like like a final cut or premiere but it's completely free um there's an, like a, there's an upgrade that lets you like more technical stuff it's only like 300 bucks right so it's like it's really really not bad at all um it, it's like ryan said too and there's so much stuff out there that will just kind of just teach you and guide you and it's it's not hard yeah that's good and I'm glad that, you know, you guys were finding something that was easy to use to make this absolute awesome film. Um, I don't think I have anything else that I want to say other than, you know, have everybody go support all the projects that you're doing. If you haven't watched Death Drop Gorgeous and you have Shudder, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, go watch it. It's yeah. it's definitely worth the uh, the hour and 44 minutes that it is. It sounds like it's a long movie, but it flies. This movie, mm -hmm. it, it just, it's, it's, it starts and it's done. And that's a good thing, you know? It's not a drag or anything like that. Well, it is, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, thank you guys for coming on and you know, telling us a little bit more about, you know, your, your lives and what you do and whatnot and all the other projects you got going on. This was an absolute fucking blast. Oh, thank well, you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. 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 All right. awesome. Well, this was the Baron's Hideout Podcast. I was your host, Dustin. I was your host, Aaron. And that was the crew, well, most of the crew from <laughs> Death Drop Gorgeous. And uh, thank you guys so much for being here and listening, and go check out this movie. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to play the sound effect again? 